Okay, you ready? Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Donnie B. This video is a little bit something different compared to what I'm normally used to doing. I don't, I'm not a car reviewer. I don't do um, talk about different vehicles and stuff like that. I mostly do Mustang stuff and performance work and stuff along those lines. But uh, today's video, I wanted to talk about the Ford Bronco. I'm in a 2023 Ford Bronco. Yeah, we are still in the middle of 2022. I should say we're at the end of 2022, but I actually do have a 2023 Bronco right here. So the reason I'm gonna kind of make this video is because it seems like every Bronco kind of has a, uh, I guess you could say a history or a little bit of drama behind it. And uh, I've been waiting for this vehicle for quite some time. And um, I kind of went against the norm on pretty much my Bronco here. So again, this is my Bronco. I did purchase it. It's not something I'm just having for the weekend and touting it as my own or anything along those lines. I purchased it uh, last Friday because uh, it came in off the truck. And uh, yeah, consider myself uh, one of those lucky ones that actually got a Ford Bronco and even got a 2023 model year and a really early one. So, um, so we're gonna go for a little bit of a drive here. Me and my son are gonna go get some lunch. So I figured I'd just go ahead and film a quick little video for you guys. But pretty much just talking about why I trimmed it out the way I did, why I went against some of the norms and um, pretty much just talking about it, you know, front to back what I got here. So let's go ahead and go for a little bit of a drive. And we'll talk about the Ford Bronco. Okay, so right off the bat here, um, when the Ford Bronco first got released, um, I was not one of those guys that was like just clamoring to get this vehicle. I really could care less, to be honest with you. So um, when the Bronco came out, it was just one of those things where it's like, okay, cool, Ford's got another vehicle coming out. And I'm like, you know, based on what I saw in the pictures and everything, it was just another one of those like, hey, cool, it's a looks like a Jeep, Ford's version of the Jeep. Okay, whatever. So, so I really didn't care much about it. Didn't really, I wasn't clamoring. I wasn't like a first day reservation holder or anything along those lines. Didn't really care that much. But, uh, so, fast forward a few months, um, you know, I started looking at it more and more, but the thing that really got me interested in a Ford Bronco was actually when a dealership I work at, Anderson Ford in Clinton, Illinois, got a mannequin model in. It was an Outer Banks two-door Sasquatch Lux package, pretty much loaded out. And I was like, wow, this thing in person actually caught my attention, caught my eye. Because a person like me would never go after a brand new vehicle just because it's not a very good financial decision. And I'm not made of money, so it's not something I would just go out and do. But just something about that Bronco just really got my attention, really caught my eye. But, you know, looks are one thing, but how does it actually drive? How's the seating position? How's all that is going to be a whole nother story. So, a mannequin model got dropped off. Again, a two-door Sasquatch Outer Banks. And um, I actually got a chance to drive it. Now, if you don't know what a mannequin model is, is it's actually a program where dealers get uh, vehicles on the lot that they cannot sell for a certain period of time. But then uh, after that time of period is done, then they can sell them. But during that interim, you can use that vehicle as a marketing tool essentially to get people interested in ordering one of these things. So um, what I did was I drove it just literally on the lot. It, I don't even think it's gone through PEI at that point. So I just literally got in it just to see what the seating position was like. And that's what really got me sold on the two door and the Sasquatch. And I'm like, wow, this is, uh, I like the seating position, I like how comfortable it is, and I just like the overall feel. And then a few days later, I decided to actually go take it on a full on test drive around the block and everything. And I was just, I was pretty much sold. I just really liked the seating position. I really liked how it felt. I really liked just everything about it. So what I have here, let's, let's translate this here into what I got currently. So this is a 2023 Ford Bronco Big Bend two door Sasquatch. So, you guys can see that my son is in the back here. Say hi, Justin. <laughs> so, it's a two-door Sasquatch. And as you know, it's got the hard top. And I went with a 2.3 liter. And of course, the automatic transmission. Now, a lot of people will be screaming right there. I can already tell in the comments section, like, why didn't you go with the 2.7? Or why didn't you go with the four-door? Because you got a kid, you know? So I'm kind of here to dis dismiss a lot of those like myths about, hey, you can't you know put kids in the back and stuff like that. But there is a little bit of a trade-off there. Um, so the, with the two-door, um, again, 
again, I like the two door because it just it was a good look for me. I just really liked the way it looked. The four door looked a little odd uh, proportionately. Now, a four door, of course, is more expensive as well, but I'm six foot tall and my son is riding in the back. I don't need to step up into the vehicle to tie him to his car seat. No problem whatsoever. Now, if you're a shorter person, say if you're like 5'8 or less, I could see where that could be a bit of a problem when you're trying to reach back and, you know, buckle someone in. So, if you're a bit of a taller person, getting kids in the back or passengers in the back seat, no problem. Now, I did spec this with the running boards. I think that's definitely helped because my son could literally crawl into the back on his own. Doesn't need my help. He can crawl into his car seat on his own. He just needs me to strap him in. No problem. Now, if you have an infant or you have someone that you have to actually, you know, maneuver in yourself, I can see that would be an issue. But my son's only going to get older. It's only going to be easier for him to crawl back there and at some point, you know, just without the car seat. And then, of course, when he's older, he can ride in the front with me as well. So, um, the two-door, not a problem whatsoever if you have a toddler. Um, another thing is that's really uh, surprisingly good about this vehicle is that the leg room behind him, with the seat still back a good way so that way my wife can sit up front here, plenty of leg room for everybody. Uh, the only trade-off is that you have no storage space. So if we plan on going in on any long hauls, that's where this would be an issue. How often would we do that in this vehicle? Probably never. My wife's Escape, uh, she's got a 2020 Escape that's been perfect. Uh, plenty of room for everybody. Uh, I don't like, uh, it does ride okay, but um, I wish I had a little bit more leg room in that, but that's for another time. But with the two-door Bronco, no problem in regards to seating space for everybody here in my family. So I can comfortably say that if you're considering getting a four-door, the only reason getting a four-door is because you have maybe small kids to put in the back. I want If you really want a two-door, you can make it work. Again, I can reach back there and uh, strap my son in, no problem, not an issue. So I would not let that sway your decision. Because again, they're only gonna get older. They're not gonna stay that size forever at that moment. But anyway, uh, so other things about the Bronco here that I kind of wanted to kind of dispel in regards to like, you need to go do this, do that. Because believe me, I've done a ton of research. I've been watching watching a ton of videos because um, I've been waiting on this vehicle for quite some time. The 2.3 liter. So everyone was saying that, hey, if you are not going to get the manual transmission, go with the 2.7 liter. And at one point, I did have a 2.7 on my order. And then... The reason I changed my mind on that, and I'll kind of rewind back to that story here in just a moment, is that the 2.3 liters, of course, the same engine that's in the Ranger, the Ranger being a mid-size truck, which almost looks like a full-size truck compared to older models, but um, it's the same engine in that this vehicle is pretty heavy, you know, over 4,000 pounds. So a 2.3 liter, I was really curious about because I'm like, why even offer it? And of course, if you have a twin turbo V6 option, why doesn't everyone just go with that? So, going back to the mannequin model for a second, why did I choose a 2.3 liter? So, the 2.7 liter, of course, there were some rumors out there, and of course there was some actual issues with the actual uh, valve issue, which Ford seems to have taken care of for the most part, but at least I can tell. <laughs> and uh, another mannequin came in, it was a four-door Big Bend, not Sasquatch, soft top, and it had a 2.3 in it. I was bored one day after work and uh, decided to go ahead and just take that vehicle on a test drive just to, you know, see what it was like to drive a four-door. I was figuring this thing was going to be a dog, it was going to be lackluster, and that the interior was going to be exactly the same. So, surprisingly, I didn't like the smaller doors on the four-door, and that's kind of what really just reinvigorated, reinvigorated my decision to order a two-door. I didn't like the short doors. And also, the 2.3 liter, I was really surprised with how peppy it was. Now, this vehicle, I'm not looking for the fastest thing in the world. I don't need the most horse horsepower. I don't need the most torque. I'm not going to tow with it. So, why did I need to get a 2.7? I didn't. So, I just remember reverting back to, I was really impressed with that 2.3 on that four-door. It was a bigger vehicle than the two-door. Now, again, it wasn't a non it was a non-sasquatch. So, it just felt really good. So, I was like, okay, well, I could definitely see myself with a 2.3, no problem. So another thing is that, uh, of course, being on a Sasquatch and stuff, a lot of people would be saying like, well, you're gonna get terrible gas mileage and why, why not just get the bigger engine? Bigger engine, of course, costs more money. But again, I like the look of the Sasquatch and I liked uh, the two-door 
look. So overall, if I'm gonna buy a vehicle, I wanna be happy with the way it looks. I don't wanna be something, I don't wanna be stuck with something that I kinda had to settle for. That goes into my last point, the ordering process. So I made the decision, I want a two door. I made a decision I'm gonna stick with the 2.3 liter. And I made a decision I want the Sasquatch again because I wanted the look. But I did make a couple changes along the way. So in July of 2021, I decided to go ahead and put in my reservation. At the time, the Ford had a reservation system, which uh, essentially meant that you were um, you put 100 bucks down and then you're in line to be able to order one of these Broncos. So <coughs> I decided to go ahead and put in my reservation. As soon as my reservation came through, um, I went ahead and got my um, order in. I don't know why this person just blew a red light. Ugh. But anyway, I went ahead and got my order in, and then you know I got a little excited because I'm like, okay, I'm ordering a brand new vehicle. Now, mind you, I already mentioned at the very beginning, I'm not made of money. Um, I never bought a brand new vehicle before, and this is not a cheap vehicle. So something really had to talk to me about this vehicle because essentially I was replacing my daily driver with this. This isn't a toy for me. This is actually my daily driver now. I traded in my F-150, and uh, of course, the times right now for trade-ins and stuff with the market still kind of on the short side I got a great deal on my trade-in so I went into this you know with a good equity position and the dealer that I work with and stuff they didn't mark up the vehicle so you know they're honest like that especially if you order a vehicle so you know it worked out great in my favor the F-150 was a great vehicle all around but I never really used its full capability I never towed with it I did haul some stuff in the bed every once in a while but was it a necessity for me no so getting something I really really wanted um, and that I kind of grew into it's not one of those things I was some completely hyped up for at the very beginning and got into later no that wasn't the case um, it really like kind of grew on me and then now I'm super happy with my purchase so as of right now I've got 114 miles on this vehicle again it's brand new and uh, I'm very happy with my decision so when I started out I started out with the base model 2.7 Sasquatch two-door it was uh, going to be right around 40 grand, and I did antimatter blue metallic, and of course that's when all the issues were happening with chip shortages and hard tops having the, the issue with recalls and stuff, so that my order got nixed right away, it was not going to happen. 2022 rolls around, I reordered, antimatter blue is off the table, and I decided to go area 51 and keep the base, but at that time, you know, I've been saving up some money and stuff since... You know, I knew I was going to make a purchase, saving up more money, I decided to go up to the next trim level. That's another thing of point of contention, especially with a lot of people with Broncos, is why does the Big Bend even exist? It's not even worth it. Well, the Big Bend, I think, is a great option. I think the base is actually the, the option that kind of needs to go away, in my opinion. I get it. It's at the cheaper price point for people to be able to get into a full-size Bronco. But for the average guy that's driving this daily, it has the amenities that I want. And that is, like, it's got the heated seats, the dual climate controls. Uh, ambient lighting and stuff along those lines and the option for signature lighting again going with the look the lights on this thing with the uh, leds and stuff look great and uh, i'm really happy with that and of course with the heated seats and stuff i do live in illinois you probably saw in some of the video already that's snowing and especially where i live we can get some pretty decent snow drifts so having the option for four-wheel drive and having something with a little bit of height in the suspension great option my son's calmed down <laughs> So, um, so that's essentially why I went with this trim because they had the amenities I wanted, but again, the price point wasn't too out of my reach. And actually after the time waiting for the Bronco, I was able to save up enough money to be able to put it on a hefty enough down payment along with my trade to make it work. So I'm super happy with this decision here. And again, I, there's a lot of people out there saying that, hey, don't do Big Ben or hey, don't do the 2.3 or don't do the 2.3 with the Sasquatch. Or if you do only do manual or you gotta do four doors when you got kids for the back. Just saying, um, I've had no issues whatsoever. Um, in regards to regular driving so far, of course, yeah, it's it's a brick in the wind. It is what it is. I'm averaging about uh, 16 and a half miles per gallon right now. I knew it wasn't gonna be great because it's a four cylinder with a Sasquatch, tall tires. And of course there's some wind noise from the top. Oh well, it's stuff I have to live with. There's other cars I've owned that's been way worse when they're supposed to be much better. This one is a great, great vehicle. I'm super happy with this decision. And um, yeah, driving it daily has been fantastic. Of course, modern technology and everything with the vehicles, remote start and everything is awesome. 
keeping the vehicle warm. It's been really cold. And of course, when snow hits, I'm super confident this vehicle can pretty much handle whatever I throw at it. So, guys, if you're looking out, if you're out there looking for a Bronco, and um, I just say just be patient if you're really looking to get what you want. Don't settle for anything less because, again, I waited over a year and a half to get mine. And again, it's not something special. It's a big Ben two door with a 2.3. I didn't really option this thing out. It's got the mid package, of course. And of course, it's got, you know, the hard top and it's got the running boards, but that's about it. Nothing really thrilly about it. And so I just say that keep, stay patient, wait for your Bronco, wait to get what you want. Don't settle for anything less and you'll be happy with your decision. So I'm pretty much gonna wrap up the video here. I'm coming into town to get my son some, uh, me and my son some lunch. But um, again, something out, outside the realm of what I normally do. But uh, I just figured because everyone's got a little drama and stuff with Broncos. My experience uh, waiting for the Bronco, of course it's a year and a half, but at the same time, you know, I'm happy with my decision. I'm glad I waited, I got what I wanted. And of course the car is in Velocity Blue because I changed my mind on the Area 51. I wanted something that I just, it just really caught my eye some more. And of course, Velocity Blue, I'm glad I went with that decision. So just be patient out there, get what you want. And don't be afraid of the two door, especially if you have kids because it works out just fine. All right, that's gonna wrap it up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, like, share, and subscribe, and uh, hit the notification bell so that way you don't miss out on any new content coming to the channel. Take care, see you in the next video.